And it's what we've been looking for all year long, games like this. And as a man, you have to earn respect, right? Yes, sir. you got to earn respect. They don't, nobody gives you nothing. The way you do it, you go out on that field and man to man, do your job and win your battle. If everybody does that, we're going to be on the good side of things, okay? We're going to earn their respect tonight. I ain't worried about the dadgum scoreboard, but we're going to gain some respect tonight by the way we play. Got me? Yes, sir. All right, guys. Everybody down on the knee right here. Let's get it. Welcome to ESPN College Football. Tonight, we're in Land People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama, as the Wolfpack from North Carolina State take on the Jaguars of South Alabama. We all want some dead come respect. Hello again, everybody. <laughs> Along with Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. We hope to get yours tonight. Now, North Carolina State comes in here unbeaten. They have not played a conference game yet, and they have dominated opponents. Some might say the schedule's been a little weak. Regardless of the opposition, there's no question their quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, has been spectacular. He's been playing outstanding, Dave. Taking care of the football, yet to be responsible for a turnover this year. In fact, he's thrown 156 passes in a row without an interception. He's a dual-threat guy, big, long as far as being able to run he's extremely hard to sack and he's been accurate with the football completing 78 percent of his passes and coach Dave Doran said it the best he said he has matured into a great leader this is a young South Alabama football program just eight years old but they do have an identity on offense and it is go for it yeah they are the mad bombers they are a big play waiting to happen and you can't make a big play unless you try to and boy do they get after it in that regard they take off running with the football. Terrence Timmons here busting one loose, breaking it out the other end. They also have Xavier Johnson, their top running back. He's a dual threat guy, catches it in the flat, and off he goes. And Cody Clements, the quarterback, is the author of all of these great things. And his favorite receiver is Everett Golson. And the big tight end can go up and get the football. He's led the way with 15 catches thus far. And they will throw it deep a dozen times a game. So I can't wait to see them get to the mad bombing here tonight it might happen right now you saw their average over 51 yards per touchdown on the year that includes a two-yard touchdown that won their last game in overtime at San Diego State South Alabama gets the ball first and they will start at their own 25 following the touchback so we'll take a look at Cody Clements the senior from Whittier California who was one of several nine players in fact who left the University of Alabama Birmingham program when that was temporarily as it turns out shut down and came here to Mobile not far away at all from Birmingham and the senior has been very steady completion percentage a little low but he's had some drop passes particularly when they visited Nebraska yeah and they had a rough outing against Nebraska didn't really play well on either side of the ball but they made a nice turnaround and came back and one at San Diego State, Dave, and what Coach Jones called the biggest win in program history. And there's that first deep shot, and there's a receiver open. Caught deep in the North Carolina State territory. Chris Lewis is brought down around the 28 by Josh Jones, and right away, they go big. That's what they do. That's what they're all about, talking to Bryant Vincent, the offensive coordinator. He uh, got a big old smile on his face and says, yeah, we want to go downfield, stretch defenses. We're not afraid to do it. And they hung one right off the bat. And Chris Lewis falls or comes under a Cody Clements bomb. His fourth catch of the season, that one for 47 yards. Xavier Johnson bouncing to the left side. will get a couple. It'll set up second down and eight. Lewis had only had three catches for 10 yards prior to him getting deep. They NC run. State has played outstanding defense Ray, just giving up 188.3 total yards on average per game. Yes, and they are one of the best defenses in the country statistically at this point in the season. They will be tested tonight, however. Clemens, pressure up the middle, gets rid of it underneath to their outstanding tight end, Gerald Everett, who works to just short of the mark. Looks like he's got about a yard to go to get the first down. Moore on the stop. Everett last week had eight receptions 164 yards and was really the difference in the way they came back late in that game to tie it up and get into overtime and win quickly they go to Johnson and he'll get a first down of the 13 yard line playing the short side of the field they like a little tempo they will do some of that freeze and look over to the sidelines but they think they have a tip on the Carolina blitz and so we'll keep an eye on that as the Wolfpack likes to bring a lot of people Again, Johnson, again, they run left. He had a long way to go to pick up a couple of yards there. 
And it's going to set up. They're going to give him a little bit more than that. They've got to get to the four for a first down. Justin Burris on the stop. Here's our first look at impact players. Well, Jared, Gerald Everett, the tight end, we talked about him. Dravius Wright is going to be responsible for tracking Everett around the field right at that safety kind of nickel position as the leading tackler in the Wolfpack defense. South Alabama's only red zone score so far this season. Red zone touchdown happened in overtime when they beat San Diego State. Thomas, the tailback, to the end zone, caught out of the air, and touchdown, that's Everett. <laughs> Gerald Everett's third touchdown catch of the season. And it's just a simple route up the middle, and if and when you have a tall guy like Everett at six foot four, just throw it up in the air. He'll go up and get it and take it away from the defenders. And Everett uses his body extremely well to ward off defenders, kind of box them out. Well, you got a great look at uh, Jared Fernandez, number four for NC State, almost got a finger on that football that might have deflected the pass. But Clements, with great accuracy, leads South Alabama down the field very quickly. And you see good protection, no problems there. That gave Cody Clements the opportunity to eyeball the football field and just zip it right down the middle. That's where he loves to get it to, his big tight end on what they call a bend route. And that time, the bent, bend route broke the Wolfpack defense. Five touchdown passes for Clements, three of those to Everett, and they say he has the best hands on the team. I don't think you can argue that. Six plays, 75 yards, and a buck 53. And that's the kind of start South Alabama really wanted when we were talking to the coaching staff to a man they all said they want to get this into the basically the start of the fourth quarter and be a close game because North Carolina State is a young football team Dave and they have not been tested they have not been put in a, a tense late game situation yet and that's where South Alabama wants to get them. Take a look there at Naheem Hines, third in the ACC in kickoff returns at just over 26 per. He waits that at the five yard line. Good crowd on in here at Land Peoples. They're hoping for around 30,000. Billboards all over town talking about what a big game this is. And it would be a huge game. It is a huge game for the USA program. Hines in the two. Has a hole up the middle. Hines could be gone. Hines in the 50. Foot race, they have an angle on him, and they're gonna get him just short at the three-yard line. No flags on the play. That was a well-executed return. You can see it from up here, how it opened up. However, there is a flag on the field. Where is the flag? Where's I cannot turn, see it. On the return team, number 84. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. It's way back. It's way back indeed. I when I said that I was 100 percent positive there was not a flag out there, but clearly there is a flag, and this is going to come back. And there it is. I think the official picked it up. It got lost in the lettering of Sunbelt Conference. So they're going to mark that from the 24 yard line back to the 14. And Dave Dorn wants a explanation as you take a look at it and it's really difficult to see in that regard as to where the penalty was and it takes away a, a real nice play by Harris to get things rolling now they have to do it the hard way here is Jacoby Brissett former Florida Gators spent a couple of years there transferred to NC State and his career has taken off as a member of the Wolfpack short and nothing there and Jeremy Reeves an impact player for South Alabama dumps Matt Days back at the 10 yard line for a loss of four Reeves picks up where he left off last week led the team with 10 tackles in the win at San Diego State he's a guy that they'll move all over the place if they get in trouble and they'll try to put out the fire with him you see Brissett's numbers for his career at NC State he now has 157 straight passes without interception going back to last season Days open in the flat. He'll get it. And Days has some room to work here. He'll be stopped just short of the first down. Tackle made by Margot Reed, a senior from right here in Mobile. But they got well, quite a lot of yardage out of that, about a dozen. So here comes third and two. Yeah, and it's a broken play. As you see, Brissett is handing off to a ghost and nobody there. But that threw off the defense a little bit, I think. They, they didn't expect it to end up to be a, a truly naked bootleg. And nobody was in the flat. And Brissett continues to be accurate 
and make good decisions with the football. We're going to say he got to the 23, so Shadrick Thornton comes in number 10 of the tailback. Did not play the first two games because of a suspension. A handoff to Days, and he will get that edge, and a lot more than that. Days down the sideline. He could be gone. Touchdown, Wolfpack off the mini jet sweep, Matt Days. 77 yards. And it's just a, a mistake on the edge, but some great blocking by the receivers on the right side of your screen. See the block right there by number 28, Samuels. The, he's their jack of all trades. He's an outstanding receiver, runner, and he can block. And he threw a nice one there right along with Cole Cook. They sprung the edge and allowed him to get it up the sideline. I'd like to announce there are no flags on that play. <laughs> and I'm right this time. Uh, I'll buy it. So a stunner here just when everybody in the stadium for the most part except for the Wolfpack fans were jacked about South Alabama's quick start. Matt Day is the reg the junior out of Weston Florida west of Fort Lauderdale shuts him down going 77 yards for his seventh touchdown on the season just a simple jet sweep but you got angles on the edge and Days gets the edge and he's got a hard day's night worth of work going we are all tied up. Rapid-fire start to this game here in the Battle of the ACC in the Sun Belt. 7-all. We haven't even played four full minutes yet. It was a three days, 86-yard drive at a minute 41. Matt Day is responsible for every yard, even minus four, on the first time he touched the ball. Well, he's going to be here all days long. Oh. I couldn't help it. Yeah. I, I, I get it. <laughs> no, you really don't. Yeah. Uh, sadly, I do. Claude Garrett will take a knee, and we'll go back out to the 25-yard line for Cody Clements. And, and we'll, Joey Jones's offense. And we'll go back and take a look at the last drive right off the bat. First play of the game, Clements heaves one down the middle of the field, finds Chris Lewis. That got things hopping. And then they score on the touchdown pass over the middle to the big tight end, Gerald Everett. And South Alabama looked extremely smooth in their first drive. Let's see what they got coming out here against one of the top defenses, albeit it hasn't been tested very much in North Carolina State. Well, they've had 22 three and out drives so far this season. That's 63% coming into the game. That percentage down just a little bit. Thomas is the tailback to fake to him, and now he'll get the pass coming out of the backfield. And Thomas will make the first defender, shove him out of bounds near the marker. Let's see if they spot him at the first down or just shy. Arius Moore bringing down the junior from Illinois. And this and is a, moving the chain. Excuse me, Dave. This is a play that they really like to do. They'll fake to a back, and then he becomes primary. And then they get guys to the edge, the perimeter, and take advantage of their speed. Thomas again, and this time NC State shuts it down. The perimeter is something both coaches talked about to us, about trying to control that. We have a great battle between in the middle of the field with these offensive lines and defensive lines. Mike Rose and Jared Fernandez on that stop after two. Yeah, you mentioned that heavyweight title fight, Dave, and that's between Joseph Salfo, the center for South Alabama, and then B.J. Hill, the nose tackle for North Carolina State. Two very good football players. And they go back to that right side rush this time. Really no gain on the play. Third and eight coming up. Here's the two guys I just talked about. And I got to tell you, B.J. Hill, the leading tackler for this Wolfpack squad as a nose tackle. You, I mean, the last guy that did that was Tim Crumrock. And then Selfo, the son of Chris Selfo, former coach at Tulane. He's got football in his blood. And he is that leader and makes all the calls for the offensive line up front. He is one tough kid. Time for Clements and just overshot Gerald Everett in the middle of the field. It would have been a first down. So, and the officials coming in, a little jaw jacket going on there involving Arius Moore, number 58 in white, and one of the South Alabama linemen. That had been going on for a couple of plays. Yeah, earlier on, DJ Benson got into it with a, uh, a Wolfpack player, and it shows me that these two came out here to play, and uh, hopefully. They don't carry it too far, and thus far, the officials have done a nice job keeping things under control, but these guys are getting after each other. Now, here's a dangerous punt returner in Braille and Sherry. 20 yards per return. The kick from Brandon McKee. Not terribly high. Sherry's going to take it on the run and is brought down after a short game. Very good special teams coverage that time for the Jags. 
Nigel Green on the stop. One of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, maybe number one, shines on Monday Night Football. Reigning league MVP Aaron Rodgers takes the Packers against Jamal Charles and the Chiefs. Chief Packers, 8.15 Eastern, Monday night on ESPN, and streaming on Watch ESPN. Of course, you got Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern. I believe the Chiefs have never lost in Green Bay, which is very unusual. I don't know how many visits they've had there. No, they haven't won. They didn't play that first Super Bowl there. I know that. No, they did not. There were empty seats in the L.A. Coliseum for that day. Straight ahead goes Shadrick Thornton for a gain of seven. Second down and three. Kalen Jackson brought him down. Yeah, and what you see there with this North Carolina State football team is a huddle. Uh, <laughs> kids? Yes, kids. When Ray uh, played, they used to do this all the time. All right. And it's not <laughs> done very often very much anymore. Now, in talking to Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator of the pack, they say they can go fast and they may do that at some point in the game But they like to control time of possession and they do averaging over 40 minutes a game Which is a staggering amount and Thornton busting up the middle great job by the Wolfpack line to open that hole for an eight-yard gain and a first down we take a look at our other set of impact players and Jalen Samuels is uh, a multi-faceted threat. We saw him throw a big block on the touchdown run by days. And Jeremy Reeves is the one that's going to be assigned to Samuels. They will move him around, try to hide him a little bit. And if it becomes problematic, they will assign Reeves to Samuels. And that should be a whale of a matchup. They're set. Thornton did a good block. Going down the field. Missed it. Is there a flag? No. The intended receiver was Naheem Hines. He was covered by Jeremy Reeves, who plays the star linebacker position but more of a nickel back really at 5'11 and 185 he's all over the field yeah and he's he plays well enough to be in the box he's, he's strong enough only at 180 pounds but he is a jack of all trades i think the feet just got tangled up no no need for a flag there good no call by the officials see the last time jacoby Brissett threw an int gas was a lot more expensive There is Samuels on that mini handoff, breaking one tackle. Samuels down the sideline, and he steps out of bounds. Forced out a little bit by Blake Dees, but there is the threat of Jalen Samuels. You don't see the fullback carry it that much anymore. No, and it's just that same jet sweep that they scored the first touchdown on with Jays. And you can't leave your feet when you're trying to make a tackle, and Rancifer found that out the hard way. They are going to have to shore up the perimeter. Because right now, every time they get to the edge, they being the Wolfpack, there aren't any Jaguars over there trying, ready to stop people. Samuels averages seven and a half yards per carry. He picked up 13 there. He goes out for the pass, gets it. Stutter step, not much there. Samuels with his 16th catch already. Roman Buchanan, a strong safety up there to snuff that out. A very short game, second and long coming up. Yeah, Samuels is a, an exciting player. Has a nose and a knack for the end zone. Uh, you look at the touchdowns he has in his career, and it's amazing the way he was. Well, those are high school numbers, actually, that, that we saw there. Uh, nobody gets a touchdown every 2.9 Not even touches a in Heisman this. Trophy winner right. would be doing that, but man, but in high That'd school, yeah. But I could see where he'd be a bear in high school. It was. NC State getting some blocking here for Thornton. Thornton untouched, still untouched, and they get him in the end zone. Touchdown, NC State. Shadrick Thornton, the senior, his second rushing touchdown, and the offensive line for the Wolfpack blowing the Jaguars off the ball 39 yards. Yeah, and that's just too easy. And this is nothing more than a zone cutoff type of play. And the guys on the left side of that offensive line, Bradbury and Thune, did an outstanding job of getting their rear ends in the hole and screening out the potential tacklers. So NC State has run for 146 yards. We are barely halfway through the opening quarter. They average 235 per game. And at this rate, they're going to get about 600 yards on the ground if they keep this pace up. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the Quesarito and Volcano Quesarito Big Boxes. Grab them at Taco Bell. Big downtown pep rally in Mobile last night. And they gave their fans a big thrill. 
in the first drive going in and taking the lead on NC State 7 nothing but the Wolfpack will come back with two long touchdown runs and lead this 14-7. They estimated about 1,500 fans downtown last night in Mobile and hoping for around 30, maybe even 35. I'd say probably closer to 30 today here at Land Peebles, home of the GM, the GoDaddy, the GMA Bowl, and also the Reese's Senior Bowl. And did he make it? Wow, that was close. Uh, Claude Garrett <laughs> got about uh, a half a shoe size away from an embarrassing mistake, but instead it's a touchback. So if you are out and about on any college football Saturday, do not miss any of the action while you're on the go. Stream any game live, download the Watch ESPN app, or just go to watchespn.com. Look at downtown Mobile, not far from the Gulf. Active shipping area. Right across the middle, a strike here. Taking off of it is DJ Vincent. Vincent inside NC State territory. Inside the 30 before Josh Jones brings him down. Just a little pop pass. It's a run action which freezes linebackers, and that allows Vincent to get behind him. Now watch this offensive line. That looks like a run all the way. You see both linebackers get up inside. That creates the room for Vincent to get into that hollow behind them, and it's an easy pop pass right over the middle. They're going to say he landed on the 30. Some 45 yards on that one, and then back him up maybe a yard as Xavier Johnson was swallowed up by the middle of the NC State defense. And Darius Moore in there again, so is B.J. Hill. Excuse me, Dave. It is tough sledding between the tackles against this defense. The outstanding defensive line. They'll roll as many as 11 players in between there. And their tackling list, if you look at the leaders, three of the top four are defensive linemen. Very unusual. Most of the time you'll see that in the defensive backfield. Or if you got a linebacker worth his salt hanging around. That happens also. In motion, Josh McGee. They fake it to him. Clements has time. Goes back to McGee, but he is covered. There's a flag down as well. The 34-yard line. Very well read there by Josh Jones, number two. And also Justin Burris, the corner. Let's see what this call is. Looked to me like uh, an illegal formation. Only had five guys on the line. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Third down. And they're going to be backed up to third down and about 12 yards to go. I've seen that penalty a lot this season. Why? Now it, the guys get confusing. So many teams use multiple formations. You look, there is one, two, three, four, five linemen, but no receivers up on the line on either side. That's just not enough guys up on the line. Uh, easy thing for an official to see and call. Terrence Timmons, number five, is the tailback for USA. Pressure up the middle. Clements very calmly throws a strike, and it's intercepted. Picked off. NC State has the football. Jermaine Pratt with his first interception of the season. And that's a big play, and only the second takeaway of the year for actually the third takeaway of the year for North Carolina State. And that is something that they talked about they wanted to get better at and emphasize in this ball game. And they started out right there with Pratt coming up with a pretty nice grab. He looked like the tight end there. Looked like he was trying to force that pass into Braden Bowman, the reserve tight end. And Bowman didn't really have much of a chance at that one. So Pratt with a great catch. I think that ball slipped out of the hand of Cody Clements. So on the 23-yard line, Matt Days, number 21, back in a tailback. Play action fake to him. Brissett looking deep down the field. Has a man open, and it's caught. Jalen Samuels. How many 6'1 or 5'11, let's say, 240-pound fullbacks run the wheel route out right. of the backfield to go deep? Well, it's not really fair to call him a, a fullback. There he is on the left side of the screen in the yo tight end position, and he just takes off like a shot. You got two out rec outside receivers that bring it inside to clear out that wide side of the field, and then it's on a linebacker or a safety to track him down, and they're not fast enough. Charles Clegg, now with Buffalo, formerly with the Dolphins. That's who he reminds me of. Guy who can play, who played sort of a hybrid of both positions in the NFL. Going this time for the end zone right here. Brissett caught. Is he in? 
It's a catch. He is not in the end zone, however, and NC State is inside the five-yard line. The grab made by Braylon Cherry. Nice job of Cherry in keeping his feet in and also finding the football. You're going to see Brissett just pump, pump fake. It's a double move. He's got plenty of time. Great protection and throws a strike to the outside where only his guy can get it. You see the one foot in, and uh, Reeves never got his eyes back to make a play on the ball because he was in position and just didn't get the eyes around Days got the football over. Touchdown, Wolfpack. And I got to tell you, while Days has a big touchdown too, but now Thornton had a great run. It's the offensive line for NC State that is the stars of the game in this quarter. They are pushing people off the ball, no question about it. And that, you, got, you win the battle up front. And I know that was a big concern coming in for South Alabama. Uh, very young on the defensive line. South Alabama wants to be very aggressive on defense, but at the moment they have been knocked back on their heels. And ironically, it's the Wolfpack, at least on that drive, has been the, the, the Mad Bombers going for a yeah. couple of deep passes against the South Alabama team that has that reputation. So for Dave Doran, in his visit to Mobile, all smiles. Well, for Dave. Who's in? Who's in? Who's in? Who's in? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. With Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. You see one of the stars for NC State picked up another touchdown. Matt Day has got a little attention from the trainer, a little cut, but he has been cutting through the USA defense so far. We, I mean, now almost 10 full minutes in, and we've seen a ton of big plays, six over 30 yards in our game. And we're barely broke a sweat. One thing South Alabama hasn't done is run back a kickoff, and they're not going to again. Garrett likes to take it up to that tiptoe line, but then does not go over. So Cody Clemens will come back out. You were and I were talking during the break. You thought that last pass from Clemens that was intercepted did not look right just coming out of his hands. Yeah, it didn't come out of his hands right. I don't know if it slipped or if he made a last second decision on changing where he's throwing the football, but it was awful wobbly and didn't look like a normal Cody Clements type pass. So keep an eye on that. He's had a couple thrown over the middle now that have been errant footballs. They go with Terrence Timmons, number five at the tailback spot, a senior from Theodore, Alabama. They've been a couple of big plays on first downs in this quarter. Nice escape by Clements just to make something out of that. He got a yard where maybe he was going to lose four or five. So second and nine coming up. He's got a nice pocket presence. I saw on film several occasions where he ducked out of a sack and was able to keep a play alive. So he's got good awareness in there, but he's going to need better protection, especially with the way they like to throw the football down the field. His longest run of the season so far, just six yards. They're kind of holding him back on that running until they begin in the Sun Belt. Screen pass here caught by Timmons. They read it very well. And Timmons will fight for extra yardage. That play was extremely well diagnosed and didn't get a whole lot out of it. Yeah, just your basic little screen pass, and it was set up pretty good, except for the one defender who s smelled it out and took care of the play. And that was Jermichael Ramos, I believe. Nope. Under pressure, Clements, and he was hit as he throws. This could be a touchdown opportunity for NC State as it's picked off by Jared Fernandez. And that's the kind of mistake that Cody Clements cannot make as a senior quarterback, just to basically throwing it right into the hands of an opponent's defender. And it was, I don't know if he didn't see the defender or what happened but he threw it right to Fernandez who was a linebacker who just dropped out he was initially coming up to look and fake like he was going to blitz and then backed out and I don't know if he saw him and then of course you had the pressure on him by Eris Moore Well, for Joey Jones uh, a bit of a nightmare here in this opening quarter after such a promising start they scored first at the Jags now a lot of movement here 
And a lot of deception and another Matt Day's touchdown. His third in this quarter from eight yards out at NC State has blown it open. Number 21, Matthew Day. In the opening stanza. Yeah, I guess North Carolina State came to play football because uh, offensively they have been really good. And it's, again, just another jet sweep. And so far, they have three big plays and four attempts on jet sweeps. Why, you know, what's the old, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, well, somebody's got to fix something, and that would be on the Jaguar side. Three carries, 87 yeah. yards for days, and three touchdowns. And they're getting great blocking. North Carolina State is on the edge. That's the second, what I would call a touchdown block by number 48, Cole Cook, the backup tight end. Twice now he has pinned his man inside, allowing the edge for days to go the distance. All right, we always like to talk about halftime adjustments. Well, yeah, it's, it's too soon. <laughs> it's too late for that. South Alabama defensively, Travis Pearson, the coordinator, has got to make adjustments immediately. What does he do? Well, he's got to get more guys on the perimeter. He's got to widen them out. And, you know, that's that'll open things up in the middle. But you, you cannot let them just run around your edge continually. So they like to stack the box. They like to be a, a team that forces you to go outside. Well, now they've got to do something to stop the outside. So they have to widen the outside linebackers. They also, I believe, have to widen the inside linebackers so that they can get to the edge and make a play on those type of things. It was 7-0 South Alabama on the opening drive, but NC State has taken over since then. Now South Alabama has turned the ball over twice. There are bad interceptions, really, from Cody Clements. Get a Claude Garrett return so far, not yet. Surprised he hasn't taken it out. He's caught that ball one, two yards deep. This one he's going to catch about seven yards deep, and I think he's going to stick with tradition and take it deep. NFL and Simons and Sunday NFL countdown. A new way to get coast to coast league coverage on Sunday morning. Start your day with the Insiders team for the latest breaking news. And the countdown crew goes inside the storylines. NFL Insiders and Sunday NFL countdown. Starts at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Well, this is a big drive here for the Jaguars. They can ill afford to not produce points here as it's getting away from them in a hurry. And it really falls on that man number seven right there, Cody Clements. He has got to do a better job of protecting the football. Scream diagnosed but dropped off to Chris Lewis. Lewis had that first catch. Early in the ball game, it was a spectacular start this time by Alabama. He gained seven, and it gets a little pushy after the play. Josh Jones mixing it up a little bit. Also, Dravius Wright. Yeah, Dravius Wright got in there. And that's a little tunnel screen that, that they run, and that's a, a nice opportunity for big guys to hit little guys. Big guys like that. Little guys, not so much. Pocket forms, Clemens down the field, little contact on that. Oh my God, he caught that. Marvin Shin, that's a remarkable catch and a great throw from Clemens to the 31 yard line of the Wolfpack. And I can't believe a flag didn't get thrown because they were battling each other down there on the bottom and they just let him play, let it go. But how about that? Just reaching out and bringing the football in, a huge play by Marvin Shin to reach out and make that catch. That, that's amazing. 36-yard gain. South Alabama quickly crosses the 30-yard line, picks up four on the handoff. Second down and six coming up. Well, they are taking shots. Offensively, they have not changed their identity, nor I, I assume will they. No, they won't. That's what they do, and they have to. They have to come up with some big plays like this because I don't believe they can consistently run the football against this Wolfpack defense. They go to the edge this time. Xavier Johnson gets inside the 25. He's going to be a little short of the first down. Gains four. Sets up a giant third down and two. But we're already really in two down territory given the score, even if it's the first quarter. And you're also in uh, four down uh, deficit time. <laughs> if you're down 21 this early, you need to take some chances, get yourself back into this ball game. 
under two minutes in the opening quarter. 28 unanswered points by the Wolfpack. Keep an eye on the tight end, number 12 on the top of your screen. They go underneath instead to the second tight end. Braden Bowman and he'll fall forward for the first down to the 19 to gain a full. Yeah, because the uh, Wolfpack defense was keeping an eye on number 12, Gerald Everett, and that opened it up underneath to him or of him and gave Bowman a chance to make a play. First and 10 Jaguars on the Wolfpack's 19-yard line. They like to throw it in the end zone from this area of the field as well. It fades up into the corner. Well, Shin is 6-2, then motion goes McGee. Everett's a big target, too. They go the other way and miss it. A lot of pressure trying to get the screen to Tyrese Thomas. It'll be second down and 10. And it's probably a good thing Thomas didn't catch it because Nicholson had uh, a bead on him. Here you see, trying to do a little submarine boot, and there was just too much traffic. Thomas couldn't get through there. But had he gotten through there, I think Nicholas would have been there for him. But study over to the is there something you noticed in your film study you like it when they do that little check to the sideline yeah they, they have done a great job of calling good plays in that situation quarterback keeper that time no and that play was wiped out by Mike Rose number 90 and the guy who made the play was Bradley Chubb he came up and took away the pitch man because that is where Clements wanted to go with the football Watch number 49, bottom of your screen right here. He's Illegal got the pitch motion. taken. Offense, five men in the backfield. Penalty declined, third down. Another alignment mistake by South Alabama, who came out and looked good in the first drive. Since that time, Dave, uh, been a little sloppy. A couple of uh, alignment penalties and uh, not really generating a whole lot other than the long ball to shin. Xavier Johnson is back in the backfield on third down and a dozen. Gonna go for that fade right now. Receiver is open. Pass hung up so long, and here's the flag in the end zone. Justin Burris in coverage against Danny Woodson. I think Burris got there a little early, and he never looked back for the football. Because had he, I believe he could have picked it off. That pass stayed up there a while. Yeah, it sure did. Number 11, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And Burris got his eyes into the backfield and kind of floated with his eyes and got away from the receiver didn't really see what was going on there and got himself a penalty trying to make up that ground so that ball will be marked by the center judge waiting for him to put that down looks like it's going to be the 10 just inside the 10 yard line and the referee says no wait a minute that's not where i want it Down to six. Xavier Johnson, the tailback. Now again, there's 12. Gerald Everett. He'll block Johnson. Picking his way through. will get to the one-yard line before he's brought down. Second down and goal. Justin Jones of 93 leading the tackling three that time for NC State down to 25 and counting in the quarter and Nice little block there by the tight end pulling around Gerald Everett we talked about his ability as a pass catcher He's a pretty good blocker too and then Chris Selfo, excuse me uh, Chris Selfo's son Joe Selfo with a nice block up the middle And off again slicing into tacklers nothing there the center of the defense stopping Xavier Johnson. Pick out your favorite Wolfpack tackler if you're an NC State fan, and he was in on that play again. Justin Jones leading the parade. They got a long way to go to get down to the other end of the field to start the second quarter. South Alabama begins sharply, but it's NC State has put up 28 unanswered cents. Start of the second quarter. ESPN College Football, Land of People Stadium. Downtown Mobile, Alabama. North Carolina State from the ACC fell behind 7-0.
but they have dominated ever since then. They've made life tough on Cody Clements, the former UAB quarterback. Well, we talked about this heavyweight fight in the center, number 66, Chris Salpo, going against B.J. Hill. You see, you got a little holding on there, and uh, you got to give the, the that round, anyway, to Hill as he knocks Salpo back, and it jams up the running play on the previous play on that second down. Third down and goal to goal on the two. Salpo's dad is here. He is uh, currently being paid by the Atlanta Falcons not to coach but uh, so he's enjoying the time to watch his son play when he gets the opportunity Timmons is the tailback he'll stay in the block Clemens goes the other way that's a backwards pass that's a live football and did he recover that in time before nope. he went out of bounds no the ruling on the field that Bradley Chubb did not get the football in time the receiver was Chris May and it appears to me the next step was going to be a pass well Chris May is a tackle he's ineligible on this so I don't know what the thought was is he can't catch a pass so I, why but it's a lateral it was, well that's a good point you can throw him a lateral but was he going to do a double pass off yes of that? it looked like that's exactly what that <laughs> was going to be pretty tricky stuff good stuff but uh, Chubb wasn't having any of it. now they're uh, making sure the officiating crew is going to discuss the eligibility they They've decided he is eligible, which he is. Yeah, anyone's eligible to get a lateral. So you lost 14 yards on that play, and now Aleem Sunanan, who's an excellent kicker, is on for a 33-yard attempt. It was nearly blocked. But he is six out of seven on the year, is the Sun Belt Conference back-to-back -back special team student athlete of the week. South Alabama breaks a 28-0 run, but they're still down 18. We have had big plays galore from both times, both sides, and we just had a play that neither one of us have ever seen before happen. And still, uh, my mind is completely blown at this point. It was a, a, a one-man tackle screen where they tried to run it to Chris May, and then they were going to send Stephen Foster, a, a guard, out to block for him once he caught the lateral. Never been done before, as far as I know. Short kickoff taken for NC State. And they're going to get some excellent field position out of this with Cherry, who's a great return man. And he will take it all the way to just about midfield. Braylon Cherry, who does a great job on punt returns, also went on kickoff returns. All right, explain Here it is. this. All right, you're going to see the left tackle, second man up from the bottom of your screen. That's May. He's going to block and then drop back so he can catch a lateral. And then the man next to him, 74, is going to release. And now he's going to be the one-man screen. Uh, the problem was Nick Chubb stayed disciplined and kept his backside leverage and was there to break the play up. That was alarmingly close to picking the ball up and making it a turnover. Again, going to the edge has been very successful. And that offensive line, there's a hard hit delivered on Thornton by Devon Earl, who forced two fumbles in an overtime win in San Diego last week. That was a solid hit, but not until an eight-yard gain. And watch Earl. Listen to Earl come up. And Man, that sounded pretty good all the way up here. That was almost an ear hole job there, which you're not supposed to be able to do anymore. Well, against a running back, you, you pretty much can get after them guys about any way you want. It's the receivers who have all the protection. A lot of movement here. Brissett underneath. That's going to be a first down. And a little flippa for Cole Cook, who had earned a chance to catch his first pass of the season after some great blocking. It's a gain of 12. Margo, yeah, Dave, Margo Reed came up and made another nice big hit, but this South Alabama defense is, is kind of getting paranoid about edge plays, and so North Carolina State counters with a bootleg, and there wasn't too many people home on the backside. The easiest job of the day so far is A.J. Cole the third. Why haven't we called his name? He's NC State's punter. It's a pretty nice drive chart they just threw up for NC State. You're not going to lose many games. You're going to lose yards here, though. The South Alabama defense, the right side stood strong that time, forcing Thornton back. You saw Dondre Cheney, the senior from Lafayette, Louisiana, lead that parade. There he is right there. A loss of three. And this is how you stop runs on the inside. You get up and in on things, and that was Alford who got there initially, forcing the cutback, and then Cheney finished it off. Second down and 13. Alfred, a former walk-on, sophomore from Tuscaloosa. And Coach Travis Pearson, defensive coordinator. That won't quit. 
Option play. And now it's a forward pass. Jalen Samuels. Who else? Touchdown. Wolfpack. A little shuffle pass, shuttle pass, where Brissett has the option. He can pitch it on uh, the speed option look, or he can flip it forward as Samuels comes around the edge, and he's got a, a guard leading the way, but there was nobody even home for the big guy to hit for him. We were told by Travis Pearson that they must identify where Samuels is at all times. For the moment, he's they're in the end zone. Not, yes, they're not doing that. He's getting high fives from his teammates is what's going on. So between Samuels and Gaze, South Alabama getting whipped at the moment. 35 to 10, four plays, 50 yards. NC State has scored a touchdown five for five tonight. And that is not good for the defense. A nice decision by Brissett, just flipping it forward. And it's a touchdown pass. He gets credit for that. Ray, how difficult a conversation is it when you've led your team on five consecutive touchdown drives? Well, it sounds like they're, or looks like they're whooping it up over there. Jacoby Brissett is enjoying the conversation and well he should he's seven for eight 130 yards and a touchdown thus far and Brissett has turned into a great leader for this football team Dave he, he actually bakes once a week for his offensive line which by the way when are you going to start doing I got a uh, couple recipes I'm working on okay and believe me I'll, I'll <laughs> test them on you and the other thing he does he writes a note to every single player on offense before each game which is to me uh, an awesome thing and, and what a great display uh, in a way to show that leadership best starting field position for the Jags off of the kickoff because it's out of bounds it'll be a penalty against NC State it's interesting University of Florida thing did not work out for him whatever and he decided maybe it's time that I move on kick out of bounds kicking team the ball will be placed at the 35 yard line First down. And it was a wise decision. And he has a, a big play offense that he's handling well. So South Alabama, that's their identity. That's what Joey Jones and his coordinator, Brian Vincent, want to do. They've succeeded, but their defense has been a bit of a problem. Yeah, and then they bogged down in the red zone, which has been characteristic of this football team all year long with just one red zone touchdown coming into the ballgame. And that was in overtime to win last week. Pressure coming from the edge. Good block there by Johnson to the tailback position and incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Lewis, the intended receiver that time. You had Jones and Jones, one and two in there for NC State. It went right through the hands. Uh, to me, uh, it looks like Lewis should catch this. That's your ball. You've got to catch that. And uh, that's that's a, an error in, on his part. And then Jones, uh, I think he got... He'll have at least an excuse. He got screened out on the thing by Jones. Keeping up with the Joneses here. Well, that's not what's happening with the Jags at the moment. The drop pass is a problem in their other loss uh, to Nebraska. Clements will try again, middle of the field. He's getting the ball out under duress that time, trying to get it to DJ Vinson, and it's third and ten. And I have not seen Cody Clements this uh, I don't know if he's uh, rattled necessarily but he is he's struggling well NC State on third down coming into the game 18 percent they've given up right there at 20 percent right now one for five and they appear to have a lot of people headed to the quarterback instead they drop back they rush five and that's going to be fourth and ten three straight incompletions and one maybe two of those should have been caught and that was a nice play by Dravius Wright. Uh, I think that Clements threw it wide intentionally, knowing that Wright was jumping in front of that route. Had he thrown it directly at his receiver, that would have been another pickoff. So Braylon Cherry, who already has more yards and punt returns this year, coming into the game, he had 161 than NC State had all of last year. They only had 62 punt return yards last year. They've, they've uh, spun the dial on the, on the special teams, and they are playing extremely well. 
That ball had an odd spin to it. It just hooked right and went out of bounds. And hooked left, I should say. So it'll be NC State ball following the 40-yard punt. After USC Arizona State, did I keep it locked in the Sports Center at night? Catch all the day's college football highlights, plus all the action from the Major League Baseball pennant races. Sports Center at night kicking off and the game ends on ESPN and streaming live, of course, on Watch ESPN if you're out late tonight. See if this defense can manufacture a stop. Have not been able to do so yet here this evening. Five for five in touchdowns. That's Matt Days bouncing off tackle. Got a block from Brissett and didn't use it. <laughs> I think Brissett was figuring he was going to go to the outside. There's penalty markers down. Well, he'll hear about that. There's no brownies for him from Brissett after not using that block. He last in the baked goods line. And that's an obvious holding sign. Holding on the offense, number 50. 10 yard penalty, first down. That's on Tony Adams. David Epperly is our referee, by the way. <laughs> Let's watch Jacoby Brissett. And part of leadership is how you do and what you're willing to do for your team out on the field. And he was willing to block, although he and missed a little bit as Buchanan shot by him. Do the shoulder out there, though. I mean, that's fine with me. Flip the chicken wing, Eddie. So a rare miscue by NC State puts him at first and 19. Yeah, behind the chains a little bit here. Let's see if they can overcome. South Alabama rushes four this time. Pressure coming up the middle. Brissett finds the receiver. And tight, they stopped short. It's not going to be the 25-yard line. Instead, Alston only got to about the 20 or the 21. The headline's been busted in for seven out of bounds. A very short gain there of four. It'll be second down and 15. And that was good coverage down the field by the South Alabama secondary. And that forced Brissett to jump it down to a check down guy. And you see... Yeah, the official oh, you know what? got uh, whistle happy, perhaps. He did. You can see for yourself some green. Now, the replay official is David Almond, and he hasn't buzzed down yet. Yeah, he stepped out on the 26, not the 21. No call. There's that flipper pass again, and this time South Alabama read it a lot better. The helmet squirts out. Catch was made there by Samuels. That's a tough play to defend because you have the threat uh, both outside and inside and the ability of the quarterback to choose which one he wants. That uh, puts the defense in a little bit of a quandary. Jeremy Reeves, you see him there, lost his hat, so he has to come out for a play, and he is an important player for the Jags defense. Well, he's the one that's supposed to track Jalen Samuels, who is lined up to the right as a receiver. Plenty of time for Brissett. On the run, and that's incomplete. And for the first time today, we will see A.J. Cole the third, number 90. And Brissett wanted Samuels. He ran a little hitch and go where he showed his numbers after about a six-yard route and then flipped it back the other way, trying to catch a defender sleeping, but Brissett was not able to stay with him. So Cole, who has spent his last two spring breaks helping out folks in Kenya. High punt from Cole. Fair catch. Made at the 31-yard line. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, this is a young football program. The fastest to make it to a bowl game. In just their seventh season, they played in the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl in Montgomery. Yeah, that's a kind of an amazing turnaround. You look at they didn't start until 09. They played a couple of years of unclassified, just getting the program rolling. Just seven games the first season. Then a year in FCS and then transitioned and now are a Sun Belt member who have won six games each of the last two years. And it was a natural procession to idea to put them in Montgomery where they drew a lot of fans and played a great game against Bowling Green and there's a drop another drop they're starting to add up that time Josh McGee four drop passes as statistician Phil DeMont 
That was Vincent, I should say, number eight. Yeah, in the round. yeah, and this doesn't help your quarterback's confidence at all. And he, you can't throw it any better than that. I mean, he hit him right on the eight. That's been a problem throughout the season thus far for this football team. Clements will try again. Steps into this throw this time. Has a man and just overthrew Gerald Everett. Third down and ten coming up. Gerald Not the best throw. I think Clements put a little too much air under the football on this one and just a little too cute with it because had he, I think, thrown a zipper you know, a little bit less loft on it, there was some separation. Everett had a little bit of room between himself and Jones. Well, Clements a little cold, but not all his fault. He went three and out on the last drive, and now he's 0 for 2 on this one so far. Still, the Jaguars have the advantage in passing yard. It's now pressure up the middle. It's picked up. Clements is going to scramble, and he'll have missed three in a row on consecutive drives. And there's a flag in the area where you usually get a holding call. We do have a flag on the play. As North Carolina State brought the blitz, they bring five guys and really flush Clements out of there. And a lot of times when you get holding beat, offense number 66, penalty decline, fourth down. I, I don't know that I, I don't think this is a, a holding necessarily. Let's watch. It's number 66 right in the middle. He picks up the blitzer. So he's got him right here, and that's just a pancake to me. I, I don't see a, a hold there. He didn't wrap his arms around him, and you can grab the jersey if your hands are inside. And I, I think that was a great block by Selfie. Bottom line is it's still an incompletion and it's still fourth down and ten. So Brandon McKee is out one more time. A lot of pressure on this kick. And he managed to get off a good looking punt. Fair catch made at the 23 yard line. That's a great job by McKee. And another flag. That one on the far side of the field at the 27 yard line. And they're talking to NC State. Mm -hmm. Coming into this ball game, uh, NC State has done really well in terms of not being penalized. Uh, outstanding. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. And that is the third time tonight South Alabama has been hit with an illegal formation penalty. Not enough guys on the line. Let's go look at that uh, Selfo penalty uh, again. He was working on Arius Moore, the blitzer. 58 is going to come up the middle. And there, there they are. I don't. That's not a hold in my book. The hands are inside. He just, you know, he, he kind of horsed him over. I agree for what it's worth. Uh, I, I completely agree. It shows you the strength that, that Joe Selfo has, though. Do they have a wrestling team here? You might want to start one up like they did with football. <laughs> it's got a weird wobble on it. A little room, though, for Cherry. He'll get to the 35 and 36 yard line before he is spun down. So another nice That's return Jerry. of 11 yards, followed by the 50 yard boomer. And Jacoby Brissett will lead the offense that finally had to punt after hitting on five of five in five touchdown three, drives three, to start the game. And Brissett has been outstanding thus far tonight in terms of making the, the proper decisions and reads, protecting the football, and running this offense. Uh, we talked a little bit, Dave, about the issues he had in Florida. Uh, I think the issues was the team wasn't necessarily very good around him, and he took a lot of blame for things. There was a quarterback controversy there at the time, too. Uh, it just didn't, it doesn't always work out, but he's made the right decision, and he's blossoming here at NC State. Particularly when you have talent like Matt Days, you can get the football to. And that's going to be a nine-yard pickup, second down and a yard to go. You might have seen very briefly Travis Pearson, defensive coordinator for South Alabama, who says, you know, sometimes I have to be the bad guy. Right. And he's going to have to be the bad guy at halftime when he talks to his defense. They've got to shore up the edges and, and do something about this running game. That's been really their Achilles heel throughout this short early season thus far. And, I don't know if they have the horses. That, that might be the biggest issue. And Brissett with some nifty ball work that time. He'll fall forward to the 47-yard line to get a first down with the Wolfpack. Gain of seven there. He's got one of the longest strides I've ever seen. He can cover nearly four yards on just one stride. Watch him as he runs to the edge. And once he puts the hammer down, he is covering some ground. 
And of course, he laid on the ground. Doesn't want to take a whole lot of hits. No. I understand. Conference play begins for these teams next week. Straight ahead. And bouncing off tacklers, getting across the 45 to the 43 for a solid gain of four. That time, Shadrick Thornton has had one big run, a senior suspended for the for a couple of games. Yeah, came back last week and had 18 carries for 92 yards. And nice contribution. Four yards on the play, second down and six. NC State has been devastating on the ground in this game. Really, they've just been devastating, period, offensively. It's But they have really gashed South Alabama on the ground. Brissett dropped the football. He just flat dropped it. And who has it? He does. I don't know if Trey Alford got uh, a hand on it and knocked it out of his hand, or if, like you said, Dave, he dropped it. But he had uh, a six man blitz coming at him, and they got on him pretty quick. Well, let's see who's right here, you or me. Yeah. Oh, you're right. It was Alfred who knocked the football out. Absolutely right. Ransford fell on top of it and almost got it. It's definitely Alfred. And he's a little frustrated when he got up because they wanted that one back. That knocks him all the way back to their own 48-yard line. First sack for either team. Yeah, you got to get on the football when it's on the ground if you're a defense that's struggling. Brissett, now he's struggling to find help. Breaks away from one tackle. He'll take off now and get two yards rather than throw deep down the field and maybe throw it away and they'll bring out the punt team good coverage down the field Brissett with nowhere to really go with the football and so then he has to start scrambling here you can see he's looking around searching around and nobody really uh, pops open and then Sean Grayer is the first man with a little pressure on him and then the, the inside linebackers D's and Ransomers show up to finish it off so that's two consecutive drives where South Alabama has forced a punt they brought the pressure which is their nature anyway they blitz it a little over 50 percent of the time high punt fair catch drop The ruling Wolfpack ball. And that's when you know things are not going particularly well for you. Jalen Thompson back there on the punt return. Wave for that fair catch. And that thing went right through his hands. And I think it hit him on the right thigh pad and just scooted up the field. Yeah, that's not even a fumble. I mean, that's just a plain muff there by Thompson. And it looks as if Josh Jones came away with that. The first and 10, North Carolina State on the South Alabama 25-yard line. So just when South Alabama potentially could have grabbed a little momentum, and they kick it out the other way. Yeah, that's got to be very difficult for the USA defense to have to get reignited for set missing there. I don't know if anybody heard this at home. We could hear it in our headsets, but somebody on the South Alabama sideline was going, yeah, that's right, two in a row, two in a row. Meaning two stops in a row, right. they finally force NC State to punt. And then this happens, a disaster potentially. So second to ten coming up. This area of the field is where Brissett will get a little more involved in terms of running the football. We've done it a couple of times on the previous drive. And off here to Thornton. That's a nifty running by Thornton as he shoved out of bounds short of the first down by Buchanan. It'll be third down and short coming up, but he did a nice job to recover after stumbling. And he has great vision, so you know, he works it inside out and just keeps bumping and bouncing until something opens up with very quick feet and good vision. He's able to find it. That hole was initially supposed to be Right between the garden center and inside play, he bumped it around to the edge and still got some good yards. Coming up to the five minute mark, third down and a yard to go. And that blitz again. And off, this is Samuels again on that jet sweep. That play seems to be undefeated. He races to the pylon, and the ruling is he's out of bounds before he got to the pylon of the two yard line. First down and goal Jaylen after a 14 yard pickup by Jalen Samuels. Well, check it out. They have an inside blitz coming. Both inside linebackers were shooting up the gut. 
And when you run to the edge, when those guys are shooting up the middle, you don't have bodies. A great call, and I thought he got in myself. Uh, he got the ball inside that pylon, and, but the, the foot must have hit the sideline. The officials called him out. No buzz down from the replay officials on first and goal. Brissett empty backfield, rolling, throwing, touchdown. Too easy. Back of the end zone. Touchdown. Let's see if we can all say this together. Jalen Samuels. Samuels. Thank you. My goodness. Everybody at home probably could say it too. So Samuels and Taze are just Jaylen having gigantic Samuels. first halves. Samuels is amazing in his nose for the end zone and the way they use him. They give him the opportunities and he does not let them down. And again, this Alabama South Alabama defense is overflowing and overcommitting because they're getting stomped on the running game, and that opens up bootlegs and counters, and that's it's what enough. stung them. I know there's some people who play fantasy college good. football. Score. If you North have Carolina Jalen State Samuel, two. so far he scored Alabama nine State. touchdowns for you this season, including three tonight. The ninth of the season, an easy pitch and catch. Well, that group's a happy bunch from Raleigh and surrounding areas. NC State fell behind 7-0 on the opening drive and then responded by hitting five drives in a row for touchdowns. And they lead South Alabama 42-10 with 4.21 to go. And they're just dominating the game in every facet, but particularly when it comes time to run the football. Yeah, they're... It's... Uh, they're making it look easy. Let's put it that way. They're just pushing the Jaguars around and doing whatever they want. They could run that jet sweep all night, and I don't know if the Jaguars could stop it. Have a yet. It'll be a touchback, and it'll be Cody Clements and bringing out the offense. But let's go back and take a look at three big ones on the ground. Back. Yeah, it started out early with that jet sweep that we talked about. And this is Days getting right to the edge. A couple of nice blocks, one by Samuels, one by Cook, and he is off to the races. No one's going to catch him there. Then they hammer up the gut right here, and that time it's Shaq Thornton doing the honors. Nice big hole to run through. And then this is the forward pass, actually, to Samuels. That they run on that little shuttle pass to get him another touchdown there. And nothing going there at all. Negative yardage, as a matter of fact, as the middle of the defense comes through big time. Roseboro in there on Xavier Johnson. Darian Roseboro, just a freshman, and an opportunity now for the Wolfpack to start playing some guys. You see what they've done so far this season in dominating games on the ground. Well, they have 192 yards on the ground tonight and have only given up nine. Actually takes three off of that. It's now six. All right. Second and 13. Pressure coming from the back end. Clements that breaks a string of seven consecutive incompletions by getting it out to Vincent. Well, I thought they got away with one here. They being uh, North Carolina State. Justin Burris, the corner who came in on the corner blitz, hit the quarterback late. And they... Uh, they let him get away with that one, in my opinion. There's a freeze, what they call it. Everything looks like they're going to snap it, then they go over and get the call. They like to run out of this double stack route. The first guy goes deep, the second guy hitches right behind him. The middle was open, but there's so much pressure on Clements, he still got it off. Marvin Shin, number four, making the grab of the 38-yard line for a USA first down. Nice job by Clemens to handle that heat. Yeah, he does move well. That's a great feel for the pocket and buys himself time. That split second that it takes sometimes, the difference between being able to throw the football and get, so, get yourself sacked. Back to the ground. Little hole developing there for Johnson, and Johnson fighting. And he's right at the market. This should be a first down for the Jaguars. And Johnson runs like a much bigger man than five feet, uh, uh, 11 and 180 pounds. And you see him shoot through this little zone cutback, and he just breaks the tackle right there. You, you can't arm tackle this guy, which is a little bit counterintuitive given his size. He stays in the block. Clemens going to take a deep shot down the sideline. It's going to be out of bounds. McGee, the intended receiver that time. Crashing instead into the South Alabama cheerleaders. Michael Stevens in coverage with him, stride for stride. And McGee hobbling just a tiny bit, tapping out. Actually, more than a tiny bit now. 
Yeah, he's limping on that leg pretty good. And McGee is outstanding in terms of his ability to track a football where you're running full speed down the field and looking back up over your shoulder. I do that and I fall down. Uh, <laughs> he's pretty good at it. Quick throw on the slant drops. Pass could have been better, yes, but DJ Vinson has had a couple of drops in this quarter. 2.22 to go. And it's five drops by the team. Third down and 10. You're not, you're not going to be able to sustain drives and make plays if you're going to continue to drop footballs. And there's the look at the McGee deal, and he ran into the advertising sign over there initially. And the cheerleader stepped on his foot, or what happened to him? But he limped off the field. Paiula in the backfield now. Number 22. Clements going to try the same play. And it looked the exact same. They're even by the same sign. Only this time they don't knock it over. This time it was Marvin Shin who was the intended receiver. And the result is also the same. The pass went out of bounds. It's fourth down and 10. And these last two deep throws down that right side, which I think Clements is better thrown deep to his right side. He has done something I did not see him do on film, and that's throw it out of bounds and not even give his guy a chance. Well, it's good coverage, too. I think that's part of it. Uh, that time, stride for stride with Stevens. He's running into some very good NC State defense tonight. McKee on yet again. Well, he put the driver to this one. And it's going to bounce into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. 52 yard punt. The Wolfpack seeking to go 4 0, and they are in a comfortable position with 2.06 to go in the half. Yeah, I thought so. I thought that was a final. Here's our situation NC State, 2.06 to go. They have three timeouts, as does South Alabama. And they're comfortably in front. Jacoby Brissett playing very well for NC State at quarterback. Also getting some great running from Matt Days, Jalen Samuels, and Chadwick Thornton. Really, NC State has had their way pretty much whatever they've wanted to do when they've had the ball. Yeah, and that's been the case throughout the course of this season thus far for them, Dave. And this is, I believe, their sternest test thus far. Um, and they're handling it with ease, but you really don't know how good they are yet. They haven't played a Power 5 team. No, very unusual. They have played short game there. Troy, also a Sun Belt team. Eastern Kentucky, whom they shut out, and then they defeated Old Dominion 38-14. to Their first Power 5 opponent will be when they start conference play against Louisville in Raleigh, 12:30 uh, Eastern on October the 3rd. Dave Dorna came over from a really strong two-year stint in Northern Illinois, where he led that program to an Orange Bowl. At the moment now, we got third down and about three coming up after the game. And actually was not did not coach the Orange Bowl game because he took over the job at NC State. Rod Carey took that job over, and he's done a great job at NIU. He went three and nine, did Dave Dorn here his first season, and then had a five win increase, which was best among uh, tied anyway for FBS teams in terms of their improvement last year, and got to a bowl game and won that as well. So they are on the right path. And it's going to be interesting to see how far they end up as that last pass was incomplete. And the ground. A rare, another punt here for A.J. Cole. One of the few times that the hookup with Jalen Samuels was not successful. Josh McGee is back deep, replacing Jalen Thompson, who muffed the last one. No rush. High kick. Wow. McKee is going to have to, if he can find it, and he couldn't, and he dropped it. And I don't know who has that. I know NC State had a defender down there who had just as good a position, and South Alabama comes away with it. That was a howitzer of a punt. That was way up in the air, I can tell you that much. That's who, yes. 43-yard punt, but it probably went 63 or more up in the air. You can see McGee tracking that thing and was able to get it back. I don't know that I didn't like necessarily a sense of urgency. Almost like he was trying to pick it up rather than fall on it with his body and protect it. Well, Dravius Wright was right there with him, shoulder for shoulder, and McGee was able to fall on the football. Now, if you're South Alabama, you do have your timeouts. 
and how aggressive will you be? They have been aggressive offensively, taking deep shots, just unsuccessful ones. Ayula, Ayula rather, will get the football, and they're going to keep it on the ground in game five. And the Wolfpack continue to bring the blitz. They brought the corner off the short side, and they will come after you until the cows come home. Dave Huxtable, defensive coordinator, has got... Uh, he doesn't have a passive bone in his body. He gets after it. Not after 34 years on the job at different universities. No. Here we go. One more time deep down the field. That's going to be incomplete. Trying to get it with Shin. They're going after Michael Stevens, but Stevens has been worthy so far defensively. Number 20. Bring up third down and five. That was a, a, the longest pass of the night from Clements, who talking to the coaches and watching him. He can hum it out there 55, 60 yards. And, They've taken seven deep shots thus far and hit on two of them. And those were early. First play of the game, as a matter of fact, was a big success. Deep shot to Chris Lewis for about 45 yards. Little pitch out here. This is Ayula. And NC State tough on the perimeter. And now you can call a timeout if you want to if you're Dave Doran. And he does. Timeout. Wolfpack have two timeouts remaining, and it has been a difficult, after a fast start for the Jags, it's been hard going. Yeah, just making mistakes, and uh, Clements, a little inaccurate. That's the one I thought came off with his hand weird. It spun out of there. This interception, he just did not see Fernandez dropping back into that zone underneath, and then they try the the tackle pass uh, the one-man screen and that doesn't work out then the fumbled punt the muff punt they put it on the ground and they've been their own worst enemies and when you're playing up which they are against this north carolina state football team you can't afford to beat yourself and it's obvious by a 42 to 10 count that's going to be the result when you make mistakes not to mention the five drop passes that have really hurt progress for this offense. And only 21 yards on the ground as opposed to 190 for NC State, who came in averaging 235, 25th in FBS. And defensively, was only giving up 51, second in the NCAA in total defense for Wolfpack, and they're not hurting themselves tonight. And that's the turn game. Well, Cherry's really good. And down the sideline he goes. Flags are down behind the play. So this spectacular run by Cherry will probably come back. There was a South Alabama player who really took a shot. A deep leader. And I don't know if that's where the flag is or if it's somewhere else. I think it was after that one, Dave. That one, the block, the head was in front. The clip came later on. 54 yard punt 52 yard return, but it's going to come back. Let's watch how this was blocked and perhaps we will see what the flag is as well. Personal foul targeting on return team number 46. That play is under further review. Targeting on a block. Well, it's a, the defensive defense list player, I should say. All right, here's the initial play. Watch 46 right here. Bam. That's, I don't that's not a, a no, penalty. That shouldn't be. He didn't this hit one. him in the head. No. That was the clip, I thought. Well, it, boy, I don't know if that should be targeting. That's not a head to head yeah. hit. I don't believe it, it will be called. There's a block in the back. That's the that's play. the block on the left uh, of the screen. If we can see that one again, that's where the clip is. But I think what we just saw in our left side is the target. All right, here's it is again. It's going to be here. There's the clip on the right side, and the targeting was on the left side of the screen. They're calling. They say Cole Cook, 48, with that hit. Yeah. I'd be surprised if, if that uh, stands as a targeting call. If it does, he is ejected. Okay, watch number three right there. Bam, that's the clip. And then the targeting call was the block, as you said, Dave, ahead of there. Here comes the replay ruling from David Almond. At the review, there's no foul on the play. The contact was to the shoulder. It'll be North Carolina State ball first down at the end of the run. And I think that is absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah, but they missed that clip too. Well, he can't. He can't review <laughs> oh, I understand that, that, as you know. Um, but the good news is the South Alabama player who was shaken up appears to be all right. We hope he is. And 
end on the other and South Alabama folks understandably unhappy that Tequan Robinson who was shaken up they did not call that foul but a, a review of the replay shows the right move well, 11 seconds left and they are in field goal position will Brissett take a shot in the end zone so that 52 yard return held up Days breaks one got to get out of bounds he knew it and he does and now they are in field goal position with four seconds to go Devon Earl chasing days out of bounds after an eight yard pickup you have a freshman kicker Kyle Bambard who's one for three has had one blocked already they lost both of their senior kickers to graduation well, look at that last play a nice little dump outside and <laughs> it looked like days almost dropped the football uh, trying to change hands with it but was able to bring it back in and get out of bounds and set him up for another shot at some points well we know Van Bart can handle extra points he's been busy with that six of those tonight now he'll try what will be a new career long for him at 42 previously 36 Mm -hmm. And it's going to stay at 36. That might be about the only thing that's going wrong for the Wolfpack in this half. After falling behind 7-0, they have dominated this game, outscoring South Alabama 42-3 to take a 42-10 lead at the break. Going to be a tough halftime talk for Joey Jones and his staff as they try to adjust to an NC State offense. They have not stopped very often. Jacoby Brissett continues to not turn the ball over while South Alabama has been careless with a couple of turnovers on offense and one on special teams and the Wolfpack have made him pay scoring on all of those stay tuned goal line is next South Alabama got off to a very promising start here at Land Peebles, but it's been all NC State since then, outscoring South Alabama 42 to three since the opening drive of the game, and they've done it on the ground with the jet sweep unstoppable. Matt Days with three touchdowns in the first half of the Wolfpack. On the jet sweep, right up the gut, the offensive line for the Wolfpack has been spectacular. Then the flipper for Jalen Samuels. He has two first half touchdowns, and honestly, the Jags just can't find him. End zone's a good place to look, though, right now with the way he has played so far. So between Days and Samuel, you have five of the six NC State touchdowns. Chadwick Thornton has the other one. And you see the rushing yardage, the receiving, it's all been dominant. NC State, Jacoby Brissett has played steady, no mistakes, while South Alabama have turned the ball over three times. Every one of those turnovers led to an NC State touchdown. Can the Jaguars figure this out and stage an improbable comeback? Find out when we bring you back quarter number three in Mobile, Alabama. quarter about to begin here in Mobile weather's been spectacular during our time here no rain at all nothing in the forecast and temperatures in the mid 70s and uh, not a lot of humidity too which is unusual for the Gulf Coast because there is no such thing as fall in some parts of the country uh, and certainly in southern Alabama and uh, Florida which we are pretty close to only an hour away from Pensacola short kickoff here we'll pack getting an opportunity for the return Hines Runs into a lot of resistance, though, as he'll get out to the 30-yard line with forward progress before he's driven back 10 yards. So Jacoby Brissett and Ray, one of the things that drives coaches insane turnovers. This guy doesn't make them. He has 18 passes there now, give him 174 straight. Without an interception, he had a streak last season that was 187. Yeah, he just takes very good care of the football, doesn't throw it into a lot of trouble, and that is going to carry them a long way. If they can get into this ACC conference play and protect the football, they're going to surprise some people. The handoff to Hines, the receiver coming over, and he stutter steps around and brought down to the 36-yard line. They make, yeah, they, that's what they marked him. I thought they might do the 35. Roman Buchanan brought him down and maybe uh, certainly the Jaguars made some sort of adjustments at halftime but that's the first time that the jet sweep hasn't really gashed him there's you got to go back to before people were Christmas shopping it was the last time that he threw an INT in the last year yes 
What have you already started this year? Oh, Thank yeah. you. Who hasn't? That is so nice. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, give me a copy of my new book. <laughs> I already got one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Gain of a yard. Third down. Thought I wouldn't. <laughs> so we are at Land People Stadium in Mobile, home of the Reese's Senior Bowl. And I'm Dave Lamont with Ray Bentley. Weather's been ideal, as we mentioned. A little cloudy today, but that's not bothering anybody. What's bothering most of the folks in Mobile, including the native head coach, Joey Jones, is the score. And not just the score, but the performance. South Alabama has been their own worst enemy, and they didn't anticipate that. They kind of went through the same thing at Nebraska, and they thought they had gotten that out of their system. Over the top throw, Brissett with another Strike to Matt Days, the junior from Weston, Florida, went to Cypress Bay High School, picks up seven and a first down. And Brissett is so accurate. That's the, the big thing right now. 15 out of 19 in this ball game. First game of the year, he was 23 of 25, and he's averaging, he's over 80% now on the season in completion percentage. That's outstanding. Chadwick Thornton gets to the 47-yard line. So they're going to need about seven to go, maybe six, eight or four there. Second down and six coming up. They'll be an interesting team when they get to the ACC. They've got two sturdy running backs, and Thornton the senior and Days the junior, plus you've got Samuels playing a hybrid position, fullback slash halfback slash tight end. They're my dark horse in that Atlantic division. I, I think they got a heck of a chance. First conference game will be at home against Louisville. Picked up a win today over Sanford. Unbalanced line here. Heavy on the right side. And they go left. Days, he got hit right away. That's a good, clean tackle. That's the chase on Milner. Yep. Yes, the redshirt freshman who's getting some playing time. And he stuck inside his gap and filled it up nicely. Nearby, Spanish Fort, Alabama. South Alabama continues to blitz, which is really their M.O. And that's what Coach Travis Pearson said. I can't sit on my hands. They stunt, and the pass is bounced incomplete. Days, the intended receiver, he went one way. The ball went another, and so the Jags force a punt. And yeah, nice little E.T., or excuse me, it was a T.E. stunt where the tackle goes first towards the outside, kind of pins the tackle, and then the... Uh, the inside, the outside guy comes inside. And that was good defense. <laughs> Looks like North Carolina State is milking the clock. <laughs> I've never seen that this early in the third quarter. Another pretty good punt. Now, can this be handled cleanly? No, it cannot. Doesn't have to be either. Bombed it right over their head. <laughs> no problems on that punt that time for South Alabama. So let's go to the preseason poll first for the Atlantic Coast Conference. And the quick they got it right about Clemson in the Atlantic Division. Florida State, we had a chance to see them early in the year. Louisville has had their struggles. Uh, they try to get their quarterback position nailed down. And right. there's NC State sitting there in the number four. Meantime, in the Coastal, Georgia Tech took a loss today to Duke. And, you know, you, you overlook Duke at your own peril. Miami, hard team to figure out at the moment. They're still not in conference play. They're off this week. Their next game is against Cincinnati. And Virginia Tech lost to East Carolina today. I don't know what's going on there. That uh, Coastal Division is up for grabs completely. I, I like Duke in that with, with uh, maybe Miami giving them the, the, the most resistance. Xavier Johnson brought down for no gain that time by Bradley Chubb, who's got a brother playing at Wake Forest and his cousin Nick Chubb at Georgia. Pretty good bloodlines there. Yeah, the man. Chubb, Chubb family. I would not play them in Thanksgiving touch football. Right. <laughs> My point. Under pressure, Clements off the back heel, and that is almost caught, and it's going to be a flag. Xavier Johnson, and that looks like Chubb, who looks a little confused by the flag. Yeah, he Pass interference on the defense, number 49. Ball will be placed at spot of foul, first down. He never got his eyes back, 
and ends up grabbing the receiver before the ball came and that they're going to call on you every time as Johnson ran a wheel route and you had a defensive end in the coverage you don't see that very often. Back on the ground or nothing done there. And just previous right number eight. Just blew in from the outside to keep that a very short game, maybe yeah. a yard. He's going to come in off the left side of your screen. Boom, there he comes, a late blitz. Timed it up perfectly and gets himself home. And a little help there as Mike Rose was also in on the play. Same blitz. Little contact, but nothing to draw a flag. It'll be third down coming up. Shin, the intended receiver, well covered by Michael Stevens. We called his name a lot. That's often not good news if you're a DB, but he has played well. Stevens has played extremely well, and it was kind of between him and Jack Tocho in terms of who was going to start at that corner. And Stevens has taken that position and played extremely well. Where they like the bend route from the third receiver, the one on the inside, number 12, the tight end over the middle. Gerald Everett, who's a great, great player, has an NFL potential. Clements on the run, throws a dart, but it's out of bounds. And it'll be a South Alabama punt. Bradley Chubb, who had a big series there. Chubb was chasing him around. So more three and out type stuff from this offense from South Alabama and they are a little Jekyll and Hyde ish to me Dave they played well in the first week of the season did not play well at all against Nebraska played their best game against San Diego State winning in overtime last week and then came out here tonight and kind of laid one on the ground Cherry. And he is <laughs> dumped. Well, if you're going to tackle a guy, tackle him. And that was done very nicely that time by Andrew Phylon. And, uh, Carson Sharp, the long snapper, also got himself a little bit. Here it comes. And he pinned in. And then the long snapper, with a little help, gets it done. Wolfpack celebrating, and why not? Up by 32. We've had an exchange of uh, punts so far in this third quarter, but for South Alabama, sometimes it's the little things that you do that the coaches will take to bed with them as good plays, and you just saw the long snapper, Carson Sharp, with an example of that. Yeah, he did a great job of getting the snap off. You're going to see him he's on, right running down the middle of the field on the right hash right now, 61. He's going to keep the ball in front of him. Watch him get his head on a swivel a little bit. Make sure he doesn't get uh, hit on one of those peel back blocks and get P-rolled. But he helps uh, fill on, uh, or file on, excuse me, with the big tackle. So, like you said, Dave, little things matter. And when a coach sees a kid hustling like that, uh, just regardless of what the score is, that earns the respect that Coach Jones talked about at the top of the show. An 18-yard pickup for Shadrick Thornton. Getting some playing time along with Matt Days. It's a nice one-two punch that NC State has. They also have a freshman they're very high on. Reggie Gillespie, the second early enrollee. Might get some touches tonight as well. Brissett rolling. Plenty of time. Lobs it the other way. Caught. First down and a little bit more. The tight end Greenwich who started on the right side. They roll everything to the right. He sneaks through the traffic and gets lost by the defense and ends up open on the other side. See him right there. He blocks initially. A little tight end delay. This is the play you often see on the goal line, which is nine times out of ten good for a touchdown. You see him. He's going to come across the middle. Brissett sets up knowing his guy's going to be there. Drops it right in. Looks like something you would do for Rob Gronkowski or some of the tight ends in the NFL as Days oh, makes a very nice move. A couple of more nice moves from Shake and Bake. And he'll get inside the 30 of the 28 yard line before Margot Reed brings him down a gain of a dozen. This is the third time they've run this play. And the, the first time I thought it was a broken play. The second time I wasn't sure. But Brissett's going to fake to nobody. <laughs> There's nobody there, but he sticks it out. And uh, they come back with the bootleg the other way. And with Day's his quickness and his ability in the open field, uh, that's a good play. Broken or not. Thornton. Well, he got a very nice block. Thornton will get. 
shouldered out of bounds right at the first down marker. That was Joe Thune, number 54, who came in with a great block for NC State. Watch the left side of your screen, and, and when you get a, a tackle who can hook uh, outside the uh, defensive end in an outside technique, that's really good. To get the feet and work across the body and then pinning back inside, that shows you some athleticism from the big kid. And you take a look at what NC State has done. There's an excellent chance they'll exceed that average tonight. <laughs> Just about matched it. Good defense that time. Some hard hitting. Reeves number nine in there, along with Alfred 78. This is uh, pride time. And defense has to play with pride and keep going, keep fighting. And that's a pretty good play by Demarion Harper, the senior, who, according to Coach Pearson, is playing lights out. And I, I concur with him after watching Harper on film leading up to this game. 105 yards, 10 carries for Shadrick Thornton. A lot of motion there, but underneath they go to Cook, the tight end. And he fights his way inside the 10. He's going to be out of bounds at the five-yard line. It'll be first down and goal for NC State. A little submarine bootleg. Uh, submarine meaning the tight end will go behind the line of scrimmage from one side to the other and kind of disappear. Uh, at least that's the hopes and intents behind the offensive line. Watch him. You see he's going totally against the grain. Then they flip it back around. It's an easy pitch and catch for Brissett. Thornton scores. And that offense. That was the hardest day. hit that, yeah, right. that whole play was when he took out his own guy. Brown uh, put him on his back. But that offensive line is dominant right now. Um, I mean, they're just pushing people, moving people along, and uh, it just when you get that kind of play, and it's it's Thune again with the key block, and Thornton now 12 carries, 111 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. And they've got a couple other guys that are doing pretty well, too. Days has three. Samuels has two. While Bad Bart missed a field goal, he has missed his seven point after touchdowns, giving him 23 on the year. And we're not even finished with the fourth game of the year yet. And here it is. Cut back. Great vision by Thornton. Gets the big block from Thune and walks into the end zone and then takes a hit. And they're up 49-10. Easy sale of the night for Jacoby Brissett and the NC State offense. They have dominated this football game. Seven touchdowns, 49 to 10. The seven touchdowns divided among three backs. There's one of them right there, Shadrick Thornton with a couple. Matt Mays with three and Jalen Samuels with two. Yes, make sure you sweet talk to QB so he continues to give you the football. Absolutely. Smart move. It's the way to roll right there. Apparently, whatever Jacoby Brissett makes for his linemen that they really like because they are yes. blocking like crazy tonight line drive kick taken short by one of the up men for usa and actually a pretty decent job there is that yeah. grayer not too bad yeah, yeah. defensive uh, tackle grayer sean grayer redshirt freshman showed uh, some running skills you're gonna see running skills on monday night for both the guys on that screen we know about jamal charles for the kansas city chiefs but aaron Rodgers can run when he has to but boy can he throw it that's a nice little monday night matchup for you at 8 15 eastern on espn and streaming on the watch espn app chiefs and the packers well, yeah, rogers a little different quarterback without the old strain calf muscle yeah you can say that again and tyrus thomas Straining to get through the NC State secondary and does a great job. Best looking run play of the night for South Alabama. And he's knocked out of bounds by Josh Jones for a long gain of 33 yards. And Thomas is going to follow two pulling guards and get to the edge. The big block on that play was by Gerald Everett, the tight end. He pinned the defense to the inside. They stay on the ground and this time not the success. Thomas again ran into McKeever and Jones and Boone also they just piled that thing up well 
Well, South Alabama came in here off of what they said was their biggest win in their program short history, defeating San Diego State in San Diego. Clements in some serious trouble here. He'll throw it away. Almost had the intended receiver, Chris Lewis, in his crosshairs. And this was an opportunity to build off of that and have what probably would be considered even a bigger win, but it's not happening tonight. Well, here it is, Dave. They just threw the ball deep to quick strike ability. That play was the last play of the first half. And then the, the first play of the second half, they bust out with a big play by Johnson running it around. And they went from down 17 to 3 to tying it up 17 apiece last week against San Diego State. And going on to win in overtime on the Xavier Johnson touchdown run. And the Aztecs had a chance in the end zone and dropped the football. Underneath and a first down for South Alabama to get to the 21 yard line. Gain of a dozen there. Nathan Sassaman, a senior from Colorado Springs, getting a touch. Ayula. Making a few miss, flag comes down. That might be a face mask. He got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe even picked up a foot or two. Jared Fernandez brought him down, number four for the pack. Let's see if this is a face mask. It was an interesting play. In the back, Ayula just hesitated. I think he waited a little too long. Personal foul, face mask on the offense, number 22, 15 yard penalty, first down. Let's find this in our replay. You don't see this very often where the back, the ball carrier, it gets called on a face mask with a stiff arm. Uh, usually that's uh, free and fair, except that he just didn't get his hand off soon enough and, and uh, latched on to Hill's uh, face mask. So I can see the call. In fact, it's a defensive guy. I don't think they call it near enough, quite frankly. You can, everyone can use a hands. To, nobody, I should say, can use a hands to the face, except for a running back with a stiff arm. They let those guys get away with that. Well, he, I think it, that was out in the open too. That's right out where the, any official could have thrown a flag in the neighborhood. Clement's going to go down the field, going for it all in the end zone. A little contact, a lot of contact. No flag though. Trying to get it to Kevin Kuchera, the intended receiver. He was covered stride for stride by Dravius Wright. I'm a little surprised because they were uh, bumping and grinding down the field right there. You see Wright, he used the arm bar twice. He, he pulled the arm of the receiver down of Kuchera. And I'm surprised that the official, who maybe has a date later, I don't know, uh, didn't throw a flag. Trying not to stop the game. Pressure up the middle. Clements in trouble. And I tell you what, that was almost a disastrous pass because Mike Rose ended up having the football hit him right between the nine and the zero. Yeah, he almost came up smelling like a rose with an interception. But when you have a screen, you have to have a little bit of resistance. You can't let him get on your quarterback so quickly. Uh, the guys that were heading out to the screen didn't give enough resistance initially. Third down and 25. Tunnel screen this time. Vinson will get to the 31 yard line. They still have quite a ways to go to get a first down. Catavia Street in there on the stop. You've got to give this will pack defense and credit as they have shut down Gerald Everett tonight. Everett coming in was a hot player had six catches for 164 last week and they found a way to shut him down. Sitting on from 49 out as long in the season so far 46. Brandon McKee the punter is the holder. No problem. Did get it over there? Yeah, he did. He is a Lou Groza Award candidate and proved it right there. 49-13 with 3.40 to go. You might be your Sun Belt all-conference kicker in action right there as he boots it in. And you're right, Dave, no problem. And South Alabama gets back on the board.
There is your score and time. It's been all NC State since the opening drive by South Alabama put the Jags in front 7 nothing. But NC State has dominated from there. 3.40 to go with Ray Bentley. I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for joining us here from Land Peoples in Mobile, Alabama. And one of the guys who's having a better game for USA than some of the others is their kicker, Aline Sunanan, the junior from Orlando. Back-to-back -back Sun Belt kicker of the week, or special teams player. Of the week. Right, he hit a 46-yarder at the buzzer last week to force overtime. And they're at San Diego State in a game that USA won. But he Himes takes the short kick and looked like he was going to take that to the far side lab, but instead cut it back and ran into a host of Jags tacklers at the 30. NFL Insiders and Sunday NFL Countdown, a new way to get coast-to-coast -coast league coverage on Sunday morning. Start your day with the Insider team for the latest breaking news. There's always something happening on Sunday morning. Then the Countdown crew goes inside the storylines. NFL Insiders and Sunday NFL Countdown starts at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. So into the game now, Jelan McLennan. A redshirt freshman from Charlotte is the quarterback number two. He goes under center. Days stays in the game. Stutter step. Breaks an ankle tackle, and he'll get very close to a first down before he is dragged down by Bull Barge, number 18. They're going to say it's an eight-yard pickup. He's just a little bit short. How many times tonight have we seen... South Alabama defenders dive for tackles and just fall at the feet of the North Carolina State runners. You got to keep your feet and keep running through tackles. And that's been a, a bugaboo for this football team. They missed 22 tackles in the game against Nebraska. And that was a point of emphasis the last couple of weeks. And they cleaned it up a little bit last week. But here tonight, I'm, I'm seeing some shoddy tackling again. But here again, they're playing a power five opponent. It makes a difference, and no question. Hayes gets the first down. You can hear their shoulder pads popping on that one. Tackled by Devon Earl, who forced two fumbles versus San Diego State in the win last week. Days, his evening may be over. He's had a, a solid day. Here's that last hit you were talking about, Dave. And it's filling up Ooh. there. And that's right on the helmet. Ron Earl sticking his face right in the hole. That's what you got to do. Jet sweep with Hines motion, but underneath McClendon, he'll complete the pass to Cole, and Cole dragging a tackler. And that is a, a staple of this Wolfpack attack under coordinator Matt Canada. Yeah, the bootleg is one of the toughest plays to defend, especially if you're an aggressive defense or a blitzing type defense where you fly after things and then, whoa, they're going the other way on you. And that means the guy on the end has to have discipline to be the one that stays home and doesn't bite into that thing. And so far tonight, they've been taking big bites. Back on the ground and nothing doing that time. There is Reggie Gillespie. Right. Smacked down after no gain by Harper. Right. Marion Harper closes down from the defensive end on the backside. And a lot of times uh, teams won't block that guy. And that's exactly what happened there. And they figure that he's going to stay home and not be able to track it down. But that's not the case with a guy like Harper who has seen it enough times and has that lateral quickness to come across and make a play all the way from the other side. It'll be under a minute in this quarter when the snap happens. Jet sweep again. And it's Alston this time who gets it off that jet sweep. This play has been devastating against South Alabama, and his helmet got knocked off by a shoulder from Bull Barge. Number 18, no flag, and a first down. It's a great name for a football player. A lot, a Bull back. Barge. He plays the middle linebacker position too, and he's just a freshman from Moultrie, Georgia. That's a really shoddy tackling attempt there from Jeremy Reeves. You got to stay inside out and go uh, hit the guy, and he he tried to dance with him. And when you start dancing with a running back, you're going to lose that one. That's where we are, and that's Ray Bentley you just heard from. I'm Dave Lamont. Weather is still hanging in there in the low 70s. Beautiful evening in Mobile. Underneath again, again, this play is going to work. This time it's Gillespie. 
And he tight ropes his way down before he finally steps out of the official. The headlinesman says, you stepped out at the 12. And yet again, South Alabama bites hard and has nobody home for a bootleg that really it wasn't, it wasn't much of a fake. Nice little job of tippy-toeing down the sidelines. That will be the end of the third quarter. NC State in position again, thanks to play that has worked what seems to be about 20 times tonight, and they're still catching in. I have not seen Leopard matched with that kind of a, a, a top. It's a good look. It is a look. <laughs> You may say it's good. I may mildly disagree with you. NC State on the handoff. Untouched into the end zone. Gillespie. His first touchdown as a college football player. And again, just too easy. That offensive line continues to dominate up front. And Gillespie is the beneficiary on this one. That right side of the line just pushed people out of the way, punishing people. Nice block by Benson Brown, the big tight end, getting the edge going there. And more missed tackles, too, by South Alabama. I see guys slipping. This is their home field, and they're just having a hard time either overcommitting or just not getting to the ball carrier time. 525 total yards for NC State against 254 for South Alabama. So a fourth. NC State running back has found pay dirt. The freshman Reggie Gillespie the second. Whatever the deal. You'd think that sideline would be a little happier based on the score, but NC State dominates this football game so far. We're very early in the fourth quarter, 56-13. Yeah, well, they know things are going to get a little more difficult down the road, so no sense in getting overexcited here just yet. But you should enjoy your accomplishments when you do them. They've sure, reached season they highs are. in points, rush, passing, and total yards. Now, you mentioned it gets tougher. Yes, it does. They go into the ACC. We mentioned they're going to play Louisville on October the 3rd at 1230 Eastern on ESPN3. Then at Virginia Tech, and you cannot figure the Hokies out no. right now. That's their conundrum. A little bye, and then Wake Forest, who lost today. Clemson has been steady. Uh, they've survived some tough games early. Boston College up there. That's a hard road it trip. Is. At Florida State speaks for itself. Syracuse played gamely today in the dome. But you're going to get them outside in Raleigh. And then, of course, the big rivalry with North Carolina afterwards. And that game could be very significant as Tyrese Thomas carries. Picks up four. And this is a uh, depth development time now for the Wolfpack defense. A lot of second team guys in there and getting good, solid game reps. And that's where you build your depth. When you, you know, that is one positive in some of these blowout type situations that you can take from it. And Dallas Davis, number 19, is now the quarterback. And he throws a strike right at the marker. And a great effort there by Everett. But here's the thing. That's the first time we've mentioned him catching a pass in a long time. Right, he caught too early, including the touchdown pass, Dave, but that was just his third catch of the ball game, and that's uh, in large part why I think this Jaguar offense has struggled a little bit. North Carolina State took away their number one weapon. Davis, a redshirt freshman from Panama City in the Florida Panhandle. He's in a lot of trouble right here, and down he goes. A sack for NC State. Darian Roseboro, a freshman, getting a lot of playing time tonight. This is a great opportunity for Dave Huxtable to take the wraps off a lot of young players to give them more minutes. All right, get that plastic off and get them in there and let's see what they got. Roseboro showed some good rush and agility to stay with the quarterback, Dallas Davis. Comes out firing, and why not? Catch made that time by Danny Woodson. Ridden out of bounds. Coming three yards. Excuse me, Dave. Coming into the game, Davis had hit on three of five 
of his passes. He's been in a little bit of mop-up duty and has himself a touchdown pass, but just watching him here, he's got a whip. He had a nice little throw to the outside. Had some sting on it. Well, Clemens is a senior. So you've got Hunter Vaughn also on this roster. He's played a little bit of junior quarterback. Davis, a redshirt freshman. So while it's way too early to start worrying about next year, this is an opportunity for Davis to get some game work in. Big blitz this time, and down he goes. He had no chance. Roseboro with his second sack of this possession. Salahuddin also in there for NC State. MJ Salahuddin, number 42. Roseboro showing you some get off there and some great. I mean, that was a. A outstanding bull rush. He took Cameron Blankenship and knocked him right back into the quarterback's lap and then reached over and got himself the second sack of the series. Third sack for the pack tonight. That's a big true freshman at 6'4, 287. He looks all of that. Seventh punt of the night. Naheem Himes awaits this one. And Braylon Sherry's done an outstanding job again at returning punch for NC State. This one a little wobbly and it turns left and goes out of bounds. And the Wolfpack's going to have excellent field position from this. For Dave Doran's team on their way to a 4 and 0 start. And I'll put Dave above 500 as the coach of the Wolfpack. He mentioned he won three games his first year. And we'll step aside, take another look at Jalen McClendon, the redshirt freshman quarterback. This may be his team next year. A little fun with the band, and they're the ones who are performing well tonight for South Alabama. The football team struggling, been outscored 56 to six, and it's since uh, the start of the game. It's a heartbreaker for them, Dave. They really legitimately felt like they would be competitive in this ball game, and they came out of the blocks and took a seven nothing lead, and I, uh, I bought in a little bit. And then the next 28 points were scored. Actually, the next 35 yeah, and 35 five, five runs. consecutive drives. They run the jet sweep again to Hines. Stutter step makes a man miss. Cole persistent with his block. And it ends up being a handsome gain of eight yards. Second down and two coming up. And they force him to go laterally. And usually when that happens, you get enough of your, your kind of jerseys to show up on defense. But that was not the case. And Reeves ends up making the tackle. See McClendon is in mop up duty on the air, came in five out of ten. Dequay Nichols, 27 now in the backfield. And McClendon, a little flip down the field, incomplete. Third and two coming up, intended for Hines. Clendon looks the part at 6'5", 208. Um, he's got the physical stature and looks like he's got a nice little arm. I think he just threw that one away. But uh, he's got some potential. I like the way he looks. Well, he's got in front of him and Jacoby Brissett. A great leader to show him the way, the yep, ropes. Exactly. And he'll fill out just 208 pounds now. He'll put on 20 pounds or so over the course of his career and end up much like Jacoby Brissett, who is 6'4", 235. Quay Nichols fights for five yards and gets a first down. We have a South Alabama player a little slow getting up. That's Reeves. Uh, he's been in on a lot of plays tonight. He's taking a few lumps. Dave Dorn in charge of this program, the winner in the MAC. He was a great player, by the way, at Drake University. And Joey Jones could play a little football too. South Alabama head coach is a site to play for the Bear. So Joey Jones for football royalty in the state. Nichols gets to the edge. And there's Reeves again hanging in there. He looks completely spent though. Number nine for yeah. South Alabama. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Joey Jones. Ray, is there, you know, there's a good possibility you played against him in the USFL? Is that right? Did you not mention that you had been here before? Yeah. He played for the Birmingham, Birmingham Stallions. Stallion. Yes, that was my first professional game back in 1983, televised on ESPN. Michigan Panthers taking on the Raleigh Dots' uh, Birmingham Stallions, and we won that game 
I think it was 10 to 6 and yours truly had a pair of interceptions. That's how I crashed into the professional world of football. Well, Joey Jones played three seasons for the Stallions. And I played against him. So you did play against him. Great modest of you not to mention that the Panthers would go on to win a USFL title. That's why you're here. <clears throat> but you are correct. After, after a one and four start that year, we pulled things out. Quarterback Bobby A. Bear. We had Anthony Carter on that yeah, team. That was, that was a big game. We had guys. some players. Uh, our entire offensive line had either played in the NFL prior to coming to us or went on to play subsequently, most notably Chris Godfrey, who won a Super Bowl ring with the Giants, and Wayne Radloff, a 11, 12 year center for the Atlanta Falcons. And you had Tyrone McGriff and Tom Dornbrook who uh, were Super Bowl champions with the Pittsburgh Steelers in their day. We had some boys. Nice looking throw again by McClendon. Ray Penny, another one uh, of those former Steelers. I could talk. Uh, you could. Michigan Panther football, USFL yeah, all night, listen, brother. You guys had a great team. Under nine minutes to go. McClendon still running this offense as Jacoby Brissett ran it. Still running jet sweeps, still going with some of the misdirection passing and throwing the ball very well. Against which I have to imagine, even the second player, second string players, South Alabama have got to be spent. And they diagnosed this one beautifully. Cherry not getting very much on that one. Tackled by Roman Buchanan. Here you see Brissett tonight. So his streak continues. Last year he worked it out to 187 before he got picked on November the 8th. This year he's creeping up to that right now, 179. And that is how you win football games when your quarterback can complete 78% of his passes and not turn the ball over at all and run an offense like he has and be able to run with the football when needed. That's a nice little recipe they got going. Second down and 11. And McClendon just milking the clock here. There's a lot of milk left in that jar. He's got to wait another 10 seconds or so. Nichols gets to the 30 yard line. He'll be four yards short of a first down. Another bull barge tackle. Well, one thing we, we haven't mentioned him in a little bit, but if you're wondering, one of the reasons this game got out of hand was the performance of the of the starting line for NC State. The front, the offensive line today was absolutely spectacular. Yeah, and that starts with Quentin Schooley, the center, and Tony Adams at one guard, Garrett Bradbury making a start at the other. Joe Thune, we talked about him many times. And then Tyler Jones stepped in as well at one of the tackles. And Will Richardson played extremely well up front to the tune of 301 rushing yards, uh, all told at this point in the ballgame. And counting. And the other thing, of course, no turnovers by the Wolfpack. You know, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Cole Cook, 48th at tight end, who threw a couple of touchdown blocks as well. And, and you know, Jalen Samuels, as much as we talked about his running ability, he had a couple of real nice blocks to spring. Matthew Days, including on the first, uh, you know, long run of the ball game, that jet sweep he took up the sideline to the house. There is Cook right there, number 48. He doesn't get to catch the football that often, though he has a couple of grabs tonight. There you see Joe Thune. He has started at all five offensive line positions. So when Bryce Kennedy not able to make it, that Thune could have moved over to play guard. They could have moved some other people around if they had needed to, which they did not tonight. And there you see Caleb Butler, number 29, putting a halt to that play. No gain on the play. There's the cool of the evening for that starting group right there. They can just sort of relax. And I think they're talking about what uh, Jacoby Brissett might be baking for them this week. There's Nichols will check out of the game. Okay, Reggie Gillespie, the second, is the tailback. NC State just burning a ton of time off the clock, running their offense. Go, 
You go to Gillespie trying to get to the edge and there is Reeves who forced the play back a little bit. And he is just barely able to keep going. I, I give him the uh, sophomore from Pensacola a lot of credit number nine for the uh, Jags for hanging in there. Now one thing that has really stood out to me tonight is the physical nature of the play of this Wolfpack football team. And we were talking to Dave Dorn this week about that. And he said, if it ain't physical, I don't like it. And he must like this because whether he's showing it or not, which he doesn't, he's usually pretty stoic on the sideline. But this is a physical beatdown that they're putting out here tonight. And that's got to please him. Well, they averaged 235 yards on the ground coming in. They're over 300 tonight. They're going to go to the air here, though. McClendon, no, they're not. They're going to pick up a little more rushing yards, and he gets double teamed and brought and down and around the 14-yard line, managed to get knocked out of bounds. It took a while, but South yep. Alabama finally uh, figured out the bootleg. <laughs> And now the clock winds again. Under four minutes of this victory for NC State. They'll go to 4-0 and, and South Alabama will drop to 2-2. Two and two. Both teams enter conference play. Oddly enough, they have a common opponent coming up. Troy, NC State opened their season by beating the Trojans, and that's who South Alabama will take on in their opening game in Troy. And that spread in that game, 49-21. to 21. North Carolina State beat Troy. Gillespie made one miss, gets to the 10-yard line. Hey, we promised you a big Monday night football game. We're going to deliver it. Aaron Rodgers, the reigning MVP, throwing a ball well. Jamal Charles, a little fumbleitis the other night, but he's had a good start to the season other than that. Chiefs and Packers, 8-15 Eastern, Monday night on ESPN and streaming on Watch ESPN. And of course, you also get Lambeau Field. Nothing wrong with that. The tundra is not quite frozen yet. No, it, it, it probably won't even be all that frosty there, but that's quite a place. I have a chance to visit there in the off season. And it just, uh, it's you, something to see. Did you make it to the Hall of Fame? It's closed. Uh, I broke my heart. Touchdown, <laughs> NC State and Gillespie scoring again. I like Gillespie, just the way he runs. Obviously, it's not against the, a first unit defense out there, but he's showing some, some spark and some signs. He's built low to the ground. He's got really good vision and feet and instincts he's going to be a good one before it's over nine touchdowns tonight 326 yards on the ground for the wolf pack yeah, it's just a thorough performance all of the way Well, if you are a South Alabama fan and you're hanging with us, we appreciate it. They're down by 50 with two and a half to go, and that's kind of the uh, the look of a lot of USA fans tonight. There are better days ahead. It's a young program, only in year number eight. And they tangle with a bruiser tonight in NC State. NC State, by the way, will not get the school record for most points in the game. Yeah, didn't they lay 100 on Hampton back in 1919? Uh, Celebrating the end of World War I? Yeah. Yes, they put, uh, they put a hundo on, uh, on Hampton Institute, which may not have even been called Hampton Institute back in 1919. That game was on the Ocho, though. <laughs> Remember it well. <laughs> NC State celebrating. 63 to 13 and they're rushing defense in the last three games pretty stout I'll tell you here in a second after this play Oof. big hit right in the middle of the field on the carry. 35 yards against Eastern Kentucky minus three from Old Dominion in the night 43 yards by South Alabama that's it I think it's 44 now where they're gonna give him one on that last one but I got to tell you, that's the kind of uh, defense that will win you a lot of ball games. Can they sustain that when the competition level rises a little bit? That is the question of this football team. And it will rise with Louisville. Coming off of a win today, a non-conference victory over Sanford. 
first win of the year for Coach Petrino's team. Surprising at that. They uh, had a close call against Clemson the week before on a Thursday night in Louisville. A couple of yards picked up there by Ayula. We'll remind you that after USC Arizona State tonight, keep it locked in the Sports Center at night. Catch all the day's college football highlights plus all the action from the MLB pennant races. Sports Center at night, kicking off when the game ends on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Another eventful day in the college game. Michigan dominating what looked to be a worn out BYU team. Ohio State stays unbeaten. Georgia cruising today. Big win for Florida. Big win for TCU at the last second. Baylor dominant today. Notre Dame pulled away from UMass after a slow start. That laid 62 on them. Well, NC State outscored them today. And the Wolfpack, second and 13, was out there playing hard. And they may not have to snap it again, Dave, depending on when they set this clock. In fact, they do not. So take a look at the Sun Belt, Georgia Southern. Very tough team. They've always had a great football program. The UL Lafayette, Arkansas State, tangling with Toledo tonight. App, App State, Texas State, we saw them earlier this year. You and I did. South Alabama got a first place vote. And for Dave Doran, victory number 15 as the head coach at NC State over Joey Jones's eighth year program. And really for NC State coaches will find fault they always do but they're not going to find many faults with this performance tonight No, outstanding performance they played a physical brand of football uh, they, they have to be happy with that and we'll see how they can do when the competition picks up next week our final score for the final time is North Carolina State 63 South Alabama 13 thank you all very much for watching and thanks to our crew for my partner Ray Bentley I'm Dave Lamont stay tuned to the conclusion for the most exciting and unusual plays of the week at Sports Center's Top Ten, the plays everyone will be talking about next week. And you know what? We've reached the conclusion. Good night from Mobile, Alabama.